Hi guys, please like, share and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you're made aware when we do future videos and live streams. Um, I just thought I'd do this video um, just quick because I've just finished watching this so I thought I'd do a review on it. Uh, so just to warn you right at the start, there will be spoilers. So if you don't want this spoil, turn it off now, come back to it afterwards. Um, basically, I've just watched the Netflix series uh, Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy. Um, this series is titled Siege. Obviously, it's a part of a trilogy, so there's two more. And this is a prequel to the original series. So... Um, made a few notes, I'm just going to go through them as I go along. Um, first note I put here was loyal to the original as this is a prequel. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, there's a lot of characters you didn't see in the original. And obviously when you watch it, it becomes clear why you didn't see them in the original. Um, I was very surprised to see Ultra Magnus actually because... Um, in the original series, as I remember it, he comes along later on. But obviously you find out he was part of the prequel. So I was quite surprised at that. And he has quite a big part to play in it as well. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. And also in the first episode, you realise that Prime is the commander. He's not actually the guy calling the shots as such. Ultra Magnus is. Obviously, by the time you get to the end of the series, you find out why. Um, so, like I said, this is spoilers. So, you, you find out Ultra Magnus effectively ends up dead. So, um, there's a lot to cover in this. Um, it's only six parts and they're 25 minutes long each. But a lot happens in it. Um, so, it, it picks up basically with the um, Autobots against the Decepticons. And the Decepticons are massively outnumbering them. And they're basically hiding and running out of Energon. So their main priorities are trying to get the Energon. And Ultra Magnus tries to call to Megatron's better nature and goes to see him. And he ends up getting captured. Now the interesting part is you find at the beginning of this that Megatron isn't the Megatron you're going to find in the original series. Um, he's not all about um, killing the Autobots, not to start with. He's actually trying to get them to come around to his way of thinking. It's only when he starts getting frustrated with how it's going that he starts changing to any means necessary. So he starts becoming the uh, maniacal psycho that we know in the uh, original series. So, so there's some interesting things that go on in this. Um, the other thing is that Starscream isn't um, Megatron's right-hand man at the start. It's a guy called Jetfire. Um, now, as the series goes on, obviously Starscream ends up taking that position because Jetfire doesn't agree with the methods Megatron is now using. He agreed with what Megatron was doing at the very start where he's trying to find a way of bringing everyone together and his allegiance shifts when he realises that he just wants to wipe them out now. So, yeah, which is interesting. Now, of course, he's not in the original series, so not that I remember anyway. And at the end of this series, you find out why, because he gets left behind on Cybertron. So that would explain that. Um, you've also got a right-hand woman to Prime, um, I forget her name now, but um, she ends up also getting left behind on Cybertron, which explains why she's not in the original series. And then there, of course, there is a lot of ones that we do expect to see, you know, like Bumblebee, um, uh, Hal, it's not Hal, Prowl, should I say, um, and, you know, various others as you go through it. Um the interesting thing is, is that Bumblebee in the first episodes isn't actually an Autobot yet. He's um, basically going around collecting Energon for himself. He's sort of a, a guy to hire when you want Energon. So it's not until later on that he actually ends up joining the fight, So, which is interesting. Like I say, a lot of things happen in this series. It's surprising. You know, you, like I say, it's only six episodes, 25 minutes roughly each. 
which isn't a lot of time, but they did cover a lot in them. And it's a good series. It really is good. Um, I've noted down here, great animation style, visually stunning. Yes, it is. Um, obviously, if you watch the original series now, the animation style does look a bit dated. And I'm normally one of these people that isn't too fond of them redoing or doing newer versions of things. But because this is a prequel, it doesn't feel like that. And the animation style is really good. Um, the colours and everything. Uh, I got a lot of um, Tron vibes watching this. Um, one of them is because of the look of the animation in places, like the neon sort of colours and stuff. Uh, the other reason I'll get to in a bit, because that's a bit further down on my list. But yeah, the animation is top notch. It's really good solid animation so yeah it's it's good it's it's um it's worthy of being a prequel so uh i've put here voice actors top notch very close to the originals yeah uh megatron and uh optimus sound very similar to the original animation and also very similar to the movies as well so um, I'd say Megatron's got a bit of a deeper voice to the original animation, but he sounds more like the movie version, so you, you kind of got a good mix there. Optimus sounds very similar to the animation and not far off the movies, so yeah, it's, it's, it's good. And, and then I'll get to my next part. Starscream is the most like the original. He looks the same, he sounds the same, and he acts just like the original. Yeah. Uh, unlike the version you saw in the movies, um, this one's very loyal to the original. It's got that slivering, sort of snidey voice that he had in the original. Sounds just like him. Uh, he looks exactly the same, except for when he turns into the... I don't know if you class it as a plane or a ship, but when he turns into what he turns into, um, he looks very similar. But... That would make a lot of sense because obviously it's on Cybertron, so it wouldn't make much sense if I was turning into planes at this point. So, but other than that, when he's a normal robot, he looks exactly the same, sounds exactly the same, and he acts exactly the same. He's treacherous like he was in the original. So, very good. I, I was really impressed with Starscream because he's one of them that, if you look at the movie version, they really made a mess of. So, it was good to see him go back to the right formula with him. Um... Decepticons remind me of Colonial Vipers from Battlestar Galactica. Now this goes back to what I'm saying about when they change. So the ones that fly, when they change into whatever it is they change into, they basically look like the Colonial Vipers out of Battlestar Galactica. You know, the three engines on the back and then the the tail and then the twin bits on the wings. It looks, it looks literally just like that, just different colours. Um, yeah, they don't look like planes. But like I say, you know, it's on Cybertron, so it wouldn't make much sense if they look like human jet fighters. Although you could argue that Optimus looks like a truck from Earth, so, and he does when he changes, so, you know, it's, it's a bit sort of like that, you know, so. Um, music reminds me of Tron Legacy in places. Yeah, now this is the other part I'm saying that reminds me of Tron. Um, it's very similar to what Daft Punk did with um, Tron Legacy. The music sounds very similar. Not all the time, but in places. Um, you know, that digital sort of sound, you know. Um, I don't know how you class it really. It's like a techno sort of dancey type music, isn't it? So, and it sounds really good, does it? It really adds to the series. And it's funny, like I say, I mean, this is an animation, but, it's, you know, it's great even for adults to watch. It was really good. So I can't say enough good things about it, to be honest. And my final note, I really enjoyed this. Yeah, I did. Um, and it does end on a cliffhanger. Um, like I say, or said at the beginning, it is spoilers, so I will mention it. Um, basically, they've incorporated the... Um, the spark into it, you know, which you had in the movies, the all spark, and um, it's kind of explaining how the all spark ends up where it does. Um, Optimus is trying to get it off the planet because Megatron wants to use it to reprogram 
all the Autobots or reformat them as they put it so that they'll all agree with him if you like turning the tide of the war um, when Prime finds this out his plan, his plan is to get it off the planet and they found what's called a space bridge obviously it's not too hard to figure out what a space bridge is it's obvious that they're going to use that to get away so there's a battle at the end Prime throws the spark through and then the Ark that they're in, because this is another part of the story, they've been hiding the Ark using holograms, etc. But they didn't have any power for it. They managed to get some Energon through Bumblebee and they fly the ship for it. And right at the very end, you see like a warning coming up on the dashboard of the Ark ship and they're obviously in space somewhere. But you don't see the all spark, so... So yes, it kind of explains, because as we know, the Allspark ends up on Earth, so that's how it got there, obviously. Um, part of Megatron's motivation in the final battle is to stop him, because he believes that if the Allspark leaves Cybertron, Cybertron will die. So it'd be interesting to see where the second series goes from there. But like I say, some of the Autobots stay behind. Um, Red Alert, the he's like a one that turns into a car he stays behind um and i think he's there kind of like their medic if i remember right um the i can't remember the female autobot but she's prime's right hand woman she decides to stay because she says cybertron needs someone to stay you've got your mission i've got mine and at this point we thought that um Jetfire was dead because the last time you saw him was taking on Megatron. And Megatron ends up at the final battle and Jetfire don't. And right at the end you see him come limping along and he basically tells Prime's right hand woman, well you're not going to be doing it alone. So obviously he's now a full-fledged Autobot. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where they go with the next um, series. So we know it's a trilogy, so there's going to be another two series. But yeah, very strong right out the gate it was very good um it was an interesting way of doing it instead of i think because they've done so many remakes and stuff now i think they realized that that's not what people want you know cover the the battle do a prequel and although at this point you have already got the decepticons and the autobots at each other's throats the wars already happen or happening the planet is smashed to hell because of war you know, so it has been going for a while, but it's just nice to have that little bit just before the original series, just to find out how they did end up on Earth. So, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, and you know, I was, I was pleasantly surprised because, obviously, in the day and age we're in at the moment, it's all reboots. They're all naff. They always try and do, redo something that was already good and just come out with an inferior version and I, I liked this because it was a prequel they didn't try to redo it they tried to do a part before the original series good move so yeah like i said at the beginning if you haven't seen this then you shouldn't be watching this video but if for some reason you don't mind spoilers and you have got to the end of this video and you haven't watched it have a look, it's really good. You know, if you like the original Transformers, you'll like this. I, I thought it was really good, and I enjoyed it. And also, it was something to do for a few hours, and it, it reminded me of when I was a kid, when I used to watch the original, which is a good thing, because if it does remind you of, you know, them times, then it's done its job. So, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised with it, and I thought it was really good. So, anyway, I'm going to leave that one there. Um, like I said at the beginning, please like, share and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you're made aware when we put a video up or we do a live stream. And, you know, stay safe guys. Take care. Nerdy geezer out.